Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. Back in the year 2000, Apple released the Power Mac G4 Cube, a miniaturized G4 computer that is passively cooled and costs a whopping $5,000 when you include the 15 inch studio display in Australia. I've been looking for one of these for the better part of 10 years and one came up on eBay for a very good price so I just had to snatch it up. So let's unbox it and see if it survived shipping. I bought a complete setup with screen, speakers, keyboard and mouse, which required the seller to ship it in two packages. First we have the 15 inch Apple Studio display. While definitely adequately packed, the stand is broken. This was advertised in the listing and we'll be sure to fix it later in the video. In the second box we've got a lot of bubble wrap. And in this little box we've got the Apple Pro mouse. The cones of the speakers appear to have disintegrated. This was mentioned in the original eBay ad, however during shipping it looks like it's gotten a whole lot worse. I'll do my best to get those cleaned up. The beefy 205 watt power supply was next to come out. Damn it is big. I was pretty surprised how heavy the G4 Cube actually is. With a bit of cleaning, I think I can get it looking pretty nice. Before I power it up, I just have to open this thing up. And once you've got inside, you've basically got access to every single component. So let's power it on and see if it still works. After about 40 seconds, it was in macOS. I tried fixing the bracket that had snapped off on the monitor. This tiny piece of metal was the only thing stopping the monitor from falling over. In hindsight, I should have known that my quick fix was not going to hold. My heart honestly nearly stopped when I saw this happening. We're gonna have to make a better bracket later in the video. As we always do, let's give this Mac a good cleaning and see just how neat we can get it looking. Methylated spirits combined with a cleaning wipe was my weapon of choice. It seems that 19 years of dust and use has definitely added up on this system. On the clear plastic, I used paper towels and some methylated spirits as it evaporates very quickly, leaving the surface smudge as well as grime free. After removing several screws, the inner part of the casing came out. Somehow dust and debris had actually gotten in between the casing, but this was nothing that a bit of metho couldn't fix. Fixing the monitor stand bracket definitely proved to be challenging. Using some old Meccano, my dad and I began working on a solution. The plan was to fit a small metal bracket over the existing piece to add strength, using super glue and reinforcing powder to help it stay together. Since the bracket sat flush in the monitor stand, we had to grind out a slot for the metal bracket to sit in. Once the groove was deep enough, we made sure it would fit in the monitor stand. To make a hardened structure around the metal piece, we added reinforcing powder and poured it into place, allowing it to harden with superglue. To make the bracket less likely to break, we planned on flipping the whole stand mechanism. I would later sand it back several times and combined both pieces to make this, the completed bracket. Theoretically, this should actually be even stronger than the original bracket, and hopefully with any luck it won't snap again. Now I could put it all back together. To add even more strength, I glued the plastic cover on as well. Once dry, it should help hold it all together. Luckily, the stand still slotted into place. In the center, I used a screw that had enough length to reach the other side and stop the metal piece holding the bracket together from completely detaching if it failed. I also used some reinforcing powder between the mount and the stand, covering the black powder with silver paint to make it look a little better. There we have it, the hinge is repaired and the screen can stand on its own once again. So let's actually try using this 19 year old Mac. Thankfully it is still functional, even after the screen fell over. This is the 450 megahertz version, with RAM that has been upgraded to 640 megabytes. It's rocking the stock ATI Rage 128 Pro with 16 megabytes of video memory. Fun fact, this card powers the screen through the ADC connector. The previous owner had also put in a 160GB 7200RPM hard disk. So I don't really feel like I have to upgrade it any further, and honestly I do not want to damage or break this computer in any way. 
Aesthetically, this has to be one of the coolest pieces of consumer technology ever released. Even nearly 20 years later, it still looks modern and elegant. That is a testament to the brilliant design team over at Apple. And now, let's play some games on it to see just what this G4 Cube is capable of. Quake 2 seems to have no problem running whatsoever, even with high graphical settings. The gameplay is pretty fluid and it was a lot of fun. I also gave Fallout 2 a go. I have never played this before and honestly I, I don't know what I'm doing, but it ran great on this system. Age of Empires 2 worked good as well, and I'll be honest I actually ended up spending about 2 hours playing a full game on here. When connected to the internet, it was still able to reach Apple's download servers and update to the latest supported version of macOS, which on this machine is 10.4.11 released in November of 2007. While web browsing is definitely possible, in both Camino and Safari I could not get YouTube videos to play. While this is a relatively small computer, at about one fourth the size of a regular G4 Power Mac, it is about half the weight, not including the power supply, meaning this thing feels very darn heavy for its size. So, what are you sacrificing in order to get that small size? The main thing back in the year 2000 was cost. As far as specs go, you're paying extra for what is essentially a miniaturized single core Power Mac G4. There is also no room for expansion via PCI cards, no gigabit ethernet, or even any 3.5mm jacks. You'd need the USB speakers for that. Starting at 3,395 Australian dollars, display not included, it's not exactly surprising that this thing did not sell very well. The 15 inch studio display cost $1,695 originally. It's one very well designed screen, minus the pathetically weak hinge. The USB powered Harman Kardon speakers do work, although the fact that the speaker cones have disintegrated definitely isn't helping them sound good. The Apple Pro keyboard and mouse are functional aside from the W and S keys which do not work for some reason. Nonetheless, it is very comfortable to type on. Even though it's cooled without any fans, it doesn't really get that hot, even when I ran games on it for a while. The port selection isn't really a strong point though, and if you want expandability, aside from adding an airport wireless card, you're kind of out of luck. Style over substance was not enough to make this marvel of engineering a commercial success. Apple's Mac Mini, their next take on a miniaturized computer was definitely far more successful. These days, a complete working G4 Cube can be very expensive. I'll be sure to take good care of this one and keep it for many years to come. Thank you very much for watching. I put a lot of effort into these videos and would really appreciate it if you left a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.